Hey everyone, I'm Amit Varghis from Informatica GCS and in this video, we will discuss how to integrate Axon with LDAP. So following are the points we will discuss in this video. Firstly, I'll try to answer the question, why should we integrate Axon and LDAP? Next, we will see how to integrate Axon with LDAP. Here's where I will show you the demo. And finally, I will give you some key points to remember while you're integrating Axon with LDAP. So firstly, why integrate Axon with LDAP? Axon will not store passwords locally and the authentication will be handled by the Active Directory, which should make you feel a lot more secure. Secondly, user information in Axon becomes much more reliable. Next, you can schedule the sync to update user information. This ensures user information keeps getting updated as per changes in the Active Directory. So if a user leaves the organization, Axon will update the Axon status of the user to delete it and the user can no longer log into Axon. Even when Axon has been integrated with LDAP, we can still log in as a native user. However, this is not possible if you have enabled SSO. Also, you can update much more information through LDAP sync than with SSO. Information like function name, mobile phone and much more can be updated through LDAP sync. Hope that answers your query on why you should integrate Axon with LDAP. Next, let's take a look at how to do it. So here is my Axon instance and to configure LDAP, you need to be logged in as a super admin. So as you can see, I'm logged in as a default super admin. Click here to get the user menu and then you can click on the admin panel. This loads up the admin panel. You can click on customize and configure and next go to system settings. Once the system settings load, you can click on LDAP server and then click on edit. You can see I've already configured the LDAP settings here. So let us go through the important options that you need to configure. The host. This would be the LDAP server host name or IP address. Similarly, the port. Uh, you can provide port 389 if you want to connect uh, uh, using a non-SSL, but if you want to connect using SSL, mostly you have to use port 636. You can also use the global catalog ports here. The principal username would be the distinguished name of the LDAP administrator. Okay, This is used to log into the LDAP server. Similarly, the password for the user. Check this option for SSL enabled if you want to connect uh, securely to the LDAP server. Search base is the root directory under which Axon will search for any user. Similarly, the search filter is the search criteria to retrieve users. So for example, if you have a group in LDAP and you want to pull that uh, all the users belonging to that group, then you can have something uh, like this the search filter, okay, member of group name and object class equal to user. This will ensure that all users belonging to that group gets extracted to Axon. From first name to org unit name, all these options should be mapped to the corresponding LDAP attribute. For example, user first name should be mapped to the LDAP attribute that denotes the first name of the user. And similarly for others. If you are using Microsoft Active Directory, you should be able to use the same attribute names as they are the default attributes for Microsoft Active. Next, coming to org unit status, this would be the default status that Axon assigns to all organizational units retrieved from the LDAP directory. You can leave it as default. Profile would be the default profile that would be assigned to all users extracted as part of this search filter. Employment type and life cycle, you can leave it as default. Axon super admin. Email address of the Axon super admin that is used to upload the users retrieved from the LDAP directory. So when LDAP sync runs, what happens in the backend is Axon connects to the LDAP server, extracts the user and creates a bulk upload file. Then Axon uses this super admin email to perform a bulk upload of those users. Now, if you're integrating with SSL enabled LDAP server, you need to copy the LDAP server certificate to the Axon server and provide 
the absolute path here. For example, you can provide something like note the 30 tickets should be in the PEM format. Next, create a trust door and import this certificate to the trust door and provide the absolute path of the trust door here and the password here. Starting from Axon 6.2, we have added three new search filters in order to map the users retrieved as part of these search filters to the corresponding profile. As you can see, I have populated the admin search filter and I'm extracting a single user here. So this user will get created as an admin once we run the sync. Update Axon user profiles with LDAP. So select this option if you want to automatically update the existing user profiles based on the search filter. My advice is if you have configured the above three search filters, then set this to true. Else, if you are using the default search filter, then keep it as unchecked. Otherwise, the sync will revert any changes you might have done to the existing user's profile. Starting from Axon 7.0, you can provide reference of an existing org unit so that in case you do not have any LDAP attribute to denote the org unit here, then you can use an existing org unit from Axon and while extracting the users, Axon will populate the users for whom the org unit is not provided from the LDAP with this default org unit. Once you have configured all the options, save the configuration and you need to run the param sync in your Axon server. This will ensure that these changes take effect. Next, you can click on operational management, go to administrators panel and run the LDAP sync. Axon will now connect to the LDAP server and extract users based on the search filters we have provided. As you can see, since I have provided just one user in the search filter, I am getting number of people for which creation has been initiated as one and the corresponding org unit also gets created. After extracting many users, this process may take a while and you may monitor the status of the upload by logging using the super admin email provided while configuring LDAP. Since I am already logged in as the same user, I will skip this step. Next, go to the user menu, click on my account. Click on activity stream and next click on my jobs. As I mentioned earlier, Axon is going to launch bulk upload jobs to create the org units and the users. So you can see the status of the bulk upload job here. If you have many users, this will show the percentage of completion as well here. As we can see, both these jobs are completed here successfully. We can go to the quick search and search for the LDAP user. The LDAP user has now been created with the details provided and the org unit has also been assigned. An ID will get populated with the value that we have provided as the distinguished name. So if we have provided DN in the distinguished name, it will pop get populated as the DN of that user in LDAP. That completes the demo. Next, let's look at some key points to remember while we are integrating Axon with LDAP. The point to remember while integrating Axon to LDAP. First is, do not confuse OU in the LDAP config with the OU in Active Directory. Axon expects an Active Directory attribute, while OU in Active Directory is an object. Secondly, while integrating with SSL enabled LDAP, ensure that you have all three certificates, the root, intermediate and primary. Convert each certificate to the PEM format and combine them. Import this combined certificate to the Axon Trust Door. 
if you do not perform this step and only import the primary certificate, the users will not be able to log in after the LDAP has been integrated with Axon. Have separate AD groups for each profile. Since we have three new search filters from 6.2, we can have three separate AD groups at the Active Directory end, each corresponding to one profile. We can then use the member of attribute at the Active Directory end and then populate the search filter for each of these three AD groups so that the users directly get created with the corresponding profiles. That is all I have for this video. You can refer to this article if you want to connect to an SSL enabled LDAP and you want some specific steps. This article covers uh, the steps that you need to perform to connect to an SSL enabled LDAP. If you have any feedback or comments, you can contact us using one of these mediums. Thank you.